What's up, Long Live Your Turtle here, and today's exciting. I just got a new canister filter in the mail. I'm gonna open it up. I'm gonna set it up on my 75 gallon aquarium behind me. What really gets me excited here is right now I have a Cascade 1200 operating my 75 gallon aquarium. Awesome filter, but it's not quite enough for me to keep this water clean enough for fish. And I really wanna add fish that are gonna be permanent residents of this aquarium. It's part of my whole new setup that you see behind me. And what's really important is that I keep the water really clean for these fish. Turtles are a little bit more lenient with water quality, but I wanna make sure the water is pristine for any fish that I add to it. Because these aren't just gonna be goldfish or koi or minnows. They're gonna be a little bit more fragile when it comes to water quality. So without further ado, I'm gonna open this thing up. I'm gonna show you what I got. And if you're thinking about getting a similar filter and just wanna see what this looks like, it's not gonna be a review. I've never tried it before. I know it has great reviews. But if you want to see what it looks like and you want to see how I'm going to set it up, keep watching. All right, so units out of the box. What can it be? What did we get? I'll give you a hint. I was on a budget, so I'm going to say this is what we call a budget filter. All right, so if you didn't guess it already, this is a classic budget filter that goes under tons of different brand names, but this one that I got is specifically a Polar Aurora filter. It is a four-stage external canister filter, and it actually has a little nine-watt UV sterilizer on the inside of the filter. So it claims to pump 525 gallons per hour of water. Of course, that's probably with an empty canister filter, but that's a lot of water to be pumping. And guess what, guys? I got this for only 80 bucks on Amazon. So already incredible deal. Yes, I'm sure there are some drawbacks to this amazing price. So I'm gonna see what's inside the filter right now. I have a mystery box inside here. Let's get to it. So I'll tell you right now, I'm a little, a little nervous because I know this cheap plastic, a lot of people in the reviews said it breaks easily, so be really careful. So I'm being extremely careful. And we're, as we open this thing up, all right. Okay, so take a look at this real quick. You got your gigantic prime pump right here. You have your on off switch for your UV sterilizer. Obviously you have your input and output. On the bottom here, you have your impeller and that's gonna pump all the water through your filter sy system itself. And then this is where you plug in that UV light. This goes underneath covering over the impeller and that UV lighter. All right, so this comes with four trays. It's like we have some plastic bioball kind of things here. We have our charcoal, we have our ceramic filter rings. And then in each one of these trays, you get one of these filter pads that are actually pretty nice. Uh, they feel good. Oh, and then you get a, a coarser one on the bottom of this tray. So before I start putting all the filter media into its proper configuration, we need to know how this filter operates and we need to know which way the water is flowing in order to set up our media to be appropriate to do its best work to clean the water going through it. Now, taking a look at the filter itself, we have your impeller and you have and you have where your UV light is gonna plug in. We're gonna want the water to go by that UV light immediately. So that's obviously where our intake is gonna come in. Um, it's gonna go past that UV light and then it's gonna go down the trays, but it's gonna go down these little cylinders that are all gonna be connected on the way down. They actually have these little helix plastic shapes in them. That's really gonna help move the water around in the canister filter. That's an awesome and really simple design. Um, and that's cool, I thought about that. So like I said, water's gonna come past the UV filter all the way down all the trays, and then it's gonna go right back up through all of your trays and through all of your media, and then out that impeller up here at the top where it goes back into your tank. So proper order of operations when it comes to setting up a big canister filter like this, you're gonna to wanna to put your coarse sponges first, you're gonna to wanna to put your medium sponges after that, and then you're gonna to wanna to put your fine kind of filter sponges after that. So once your water goes through all that, all the big poopy gross parts of the water have been collected and any ammonia and nitrites broken down by what beneficial bacteria, we love our beneficial bacteria, it saves us in the aquarist world. You're going to want to put that after all those sponge filters and you're going to want to pack in as much of this stuff as you can. So they gave us these bio balls 
and which have a little bit of surface area on them. And we have these ceramic rings which have tons of surface area on them. And I'm actually gonna add my own little touch and it's gonna be this Eheim Substrat Pro Biological Filter Ball. And these are a kind of centered glass ball that just has an epic amount of surface area on it. They're not that cheap. It's like almost half as expensive as this filter, which is crazy. And I'm actually giving this a try for the first time. So again, not a review or anything. We're trying that out, but yeah, I don't see much biological filtration going on in this filter. So I'm gonna add my own and it's gonna be this. Um, you might see I have Biomax too, which I really like. That's gonna go in my Fluval FX6 because I need to add more to that one. Uh, I, if I have room for these bio balls, I guess I'll keep them in. I'm not sure how effective they'll be, but let's start putting this thing together. So going on the bottom of the tray, we got this core sponge that they gave us, and then we got this sponge that's going on the bottom. Next up, I'm actually gonna put the one with the bio balls and another core sponge right here. All right, so I just thought of something and I wanna try it. So they gave us a lot of these kind of fine sponges and I don't want this to get gunked up because I'm kind of changing around how things work. And I don't wanna stack a fine filter on another fine filter. I'm gonna put these bio balls on top of this sponge like where they were before. But I'm gonna put this on top of those. And that'll give it a little bit of space in between the two really fine filters to help the water hopefully move through them being right in a row like that. And this should fit perfectly in there. So yeah, let's put this in there. And then if any biological filter decides to exist, that's great. So we have coarse, fine, fine, bio balls, fine. Now feel free to just absolutely crush me in the comments here. Because again, I'm trying this for the first time. So give me tips people. There's a lot of people out there that have more experience than me. I just looked at the manual and they actually tell you exactly how this filter works. So we were correct, good job. All right, so we're on the third tray here. What I'm gonna put here is actually going to be, oh, what a mess. These ceramic rings, they're kind of in this bag, which I'm not a huge fan of. And I'm gonna actually dump them out. Yeah, I'm sure it's convenient, but I want more in there, so. All right, you guys, so I know I said I was gonna save this Fluval Biomax for my Fluval FX6 just to fill it up a little bit more, but I don't like the amount of ceramic rings this came with. I need more, so I'm gonna take what's from that box. So again, this is the Fluval Biomax. I know this Biomax is really good at being a biological filter, so I'm gonna pour that in there as well. All right, so that is nice and full. That's gonna be our third level. Lots of biological filtration there. Fourth and final level. We're gonna use our fancy Eheim Substrat Pro. Now you can see these are just little tiny balls. And I kinda wanna use the net for these, but I also don't, so I'm not going to. All right, so we're gonna take these. We're just, we're just gonna pour these straight into the base here. Kinda wish I had a bag for these. Um, I would need more than that bag. And if these end up deteriorating too much, I will have to put these in a bag. Um, if they start moving around the filter too much, I'm sure I'll be able to hear that. All right, so that's all our biological media. Last thing I wanna do is put this carbon bag in. I'm gonna give this a quick rinse because it's already a huge mess in my hands. All right, so I gave this a good rinse. All right, so carbon's on the top. That should be the last thing in your filter. It should be the last thing that the water passes over. And that, folks, is our completed tray stack for this canister filter. Again, please throw comments on this video if you think I messed up this setup thoroughly. Is what I'm going with, and I think it's gonna work out well. Now, before I actually put this back in the canister filter, I'm gonna give the whole thing a nice quick rinse just to get any sort of, any chemicals or whatever might be on this from the factory off just before it starts pumping water through my aquarium. All right, so we got this other box of tubing. Okay, instructions. We have our release valve. You have your 
green tubes. Don't know why they ever thought that was a good idea. And then you got your bent hoses that are gonna go around the side of your tank. All right, so this is all external to our filter. We still have our UV light to install and then that's that. So what I'm gonna do now is put the filter media baskets into our filter and fill it up with the amount of water that it recommends. Which is none, zero. All right, so these are all our parts. Um, what I need to install next is our UV light. Now what we're gonna do here is not touch it with your bare hands. Yes. This here is gonna be your cover to your UV light, which goes all the way around. Um, looks cracked. So that's kind of annoying. So this came cracked, unfortunately, um, but it still has its structural integrity-ish enough for me not to be able to just break it off easily. Um, this glass is gonna protect your actual media and stuff that might get exposed to your UV. Um, from getting fried because you don't want your beneficial bacteria, which UV destroys to be fried, obviously. <sighs> all right, it was a big mistake installing that broken UV bulb protector. And all I can say here is reach out to the company and try to return the product if this happens to you. Otherwise, check out my mistake and what happened with this bulb at the end of the video. And I quickly show you a way to fix the broken glass if this problem arises and you can't get a return. Otherwise, keep enjoying the video. All right, so we're gonna take our quartz tube here. And we are going to plug it in to the UV outlet here. That snaps in there, that took a little bit of force. And then you're gonna put your cover just right over that. There's a little locking mechanism. That should be all set now. All right, so your UV light's in. I'm gonna put the media baskets in. All right, so when you put the media baskets in, just make sure there's just no gaps here. You don't want any bypass in this filter, otherwise your filter's not gonna be doing its job. Yeah, just give this, so just give it a good push to make sure you're not leaving any gaps between these trays. All right, almost forgot about this whole piece here, so don't forget to put this on the filter itself. All right, you wanna be really careful there with that UV light, even though it has that cover, mine's broken, so. All right, so the first clamps you wanna do are these big side ones. Boom, and then you got these little side ones. Boom. Now you're all clamped up. Next thing you wanna do is put this cool little valve here that will take both your tubes. It has a lock and unlock so that you can take this off instead of having to take an individual tube off, risk lots of spillage. This is kind of just like a valve, so that's a cool little design. You're just gonna put that right in that slot there, super easy. Boom, that's locked in now. All right, you guys, so what we're working with here is we have our output bend tube and we have our intake to bent tube. And this is gonna go over the side of your aquarium. Notice really quick that this thing is gigantic. So if you have a really small tank or a really just short tank, um, just be aware that this intake tube is gigantic because you're also gonna put this strainer at the end of it. And that is literally going to the bottom of my tank and I have a 75 gallon aquarium. So anything smaller than that, be wary, uh, you could probably cut this, but be really careful because this is a hard plastic and you might crack it. You can definitely replace this tubing with your own tubing and your own DIY situation. Just know that in advance. Uh, so this piece here is a little interesting because they give you a spray bar. So they give you two extensions for a spray bar, um, which I love, I love spray bars. I actually have one in the tank right now to get to places that's hard to reach. For my purposes, I don't need it, but I just want to show you how it works anyway. So you have spray bar. Um, notice though that you don't have any way to direct where this is going and also notice where the bend is. So the only way you can set this up in your tank to actually work is to put it on the side like that and then your spray bar will go across and then spray water into the tank that way. And then they have these little zip clamps to hold your tubing to the actual spot where you're gonna install that green tube I showed you. 
And they have these suction cups to suction cup your spray bar and intake to the side of your tank. So let's get this thing set up. Uh, you're probably sick of hearing me talk, so. Guess what though? Yeah, I have to talk again. So I have this DIY cover here that is made of egg crate. And right now I have it set up to take the intake and output with spray bar of my Cascade 1200. However, I only have this one spot that I left open for future filters. I think this is gonna take two of these spots for this filter, because I wanna put the intake way over on the corner here, and then the output just where I have this existing one. So I'm gonna have to break these pieces off real quick, and then we're gonna have full access for these tubes to go in. All right, so I got my tubing set up. Let's talk about it real quick. I had to break off some pieces of my custom DIY top here um, so that these tubes fit inside. You'll notice I actually ended up putting the output towards the outside of the tank. The right here I wanna talk about with that is if you look at how far down my intake tube goes, it goes all the way to the sand. So it goes all the way to the bottom of my tank. I have a 75 gallon aquarium, so it's designed at least for the depth of a 75 gallon aquarium. I'm not sure why they make this clamping mechanism barely fit a 75 gallon aquarium. Beats me because this seems like the most popular tank size or slightly larger tank sizes, which would have maybe even bigger trim on it. And you couldn't even use this plastic assembly. And if you don't use this, which I tried, this tube is just flailing around. It has nothing holding it to the tank. So that's one issue I have with these plastic pieces. The other issue I have is you'll notice there's a gap here and Again, that's because these clips just don't fit a 75 gallon trim very well. So you can't get it that last eighth inch. And that's a big problem because if you look at where the output is, it's the tube itself is aligned with the top of my water. I have this tank filled all the way to the top, like all the way to the top. And what saves me is that little output gets me another maybe three quarters of an inch down from the top of the water. Of course, this would, so if this actually fit, it would give me another maybe quarter of an inch, maybe a little more than that into the water because I'm gonna have evaporation and I don't wanna hear this filter every couple of days just because I'm not replacing evaporation water. That's kind of silly. So I'm not sure why they didn't have some sort of adjustable output that would let you go a little deeper in the water. Even with that spray bar, you're still gonna be at that same level. But I gotta remember this is a budget filter and it can't be too picky. I also installed our tubing. So you just kind of push it on and you gotta give it a little wiggle because it's a pretty tight fit and you get it over those two little ridges. And yeah, this is a nice tight fit, tight fit on here. They come with these little zip clamps and you'll see this thing is already all the way closed and look how loose that is. So that is just complete junk and there's no reason for this. But I'm not too worried about it. Sorry, this is my cover. Not too worried about it because th this is a really tight fit and with those little ridges, I'm not too concerned about this leaking. Obviously I'll keep an eye on it, but I don't think those zip clamps are of any use. So here's the intake here. So same thing. And that's gonna go down to my filter. So we're all set up to start the filter from the top section. Now we have to hook everything up on the filter, let's go. Next thing to do here is to hook up our tubes um, into these nozzles. So if we look over here at the instructions, you can see you got your little UV light and then you got your red arrow. So that's gonna be your intake going down and through the filter and then your output is gonna be that blue. So the farthest away from your UV light. That's really the only place I could find picture wise that that's true. So I really hope they got this right. All right, you guys, so here's our intake tube. Now, this is obviously like two feet long and you don't want tons of looping filter tube because that's gonna be very inefficient. And you can use a lot of that filter power and suction by just having really long tubes. So cut them to the length that they need to be. Obviously, if you need it that long, do what you must, but we can be a little more efficient here and cut off a good amount of it. I'm also gonna leave a little bit of extra just because if I wanna move this around in the future, I want that extra tubing to save me from needing new tubes. I don't wanna cut too much, of course. So bear with me, I'm gonna use just some sharp scissors and cut the tube where I need it lengthwise. 
All right, so we got this thing cut, it's not beautiful, but now what you're gonna wanna do is put it on your intake nozzle. Again, you're gonna wanna get this far down as possible. Bear with me for a second while I get this on there. And then you're gonna clamp it by just using a screw. Screw on clamp, which are great. And just make sure that thing is really on there well. Obviously, this is while your water's going, you don't want this to leak. I'll go over your floor. All right, we're good there. Let's do the output hose now. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna get it to the right size, cut it, and then put it on here. And I'll do that in one second. Here we go. All right, tubes are hooked up in the back. Got my, got them all clamped. Now it's time to prime it. What it says is just push, push your primer. I pressed the primer probably 10 times. All the water started draining into the canister filter and it's ready to be plugged in. So let's see what happens. All right. And there you go, folks. Decent flow. Definitely a little worried because of all the heat I put in there, but we're good. Last thing you're gonna wanna check is whether or not this light is on. That little blue thing right there indicates that your UV lamp is working, it's operating. There's no water or anything that got in there that destroyed it. So that's great, because I was a little worried about the crack in the glass that that might fill up and just break it, but we're good. So that's it, we successfully installed the Polar Aurora HW304B canister filter. Now I wanna give a quick overview review of what I think of this filter so far, even though I really haven't been running it that long, so I'm not gonna give it a performance review, but I wanna talk about installation and just overall build of this filter. So with the canister filter itself, this thing is quite large and has a great volume to add filter media. As you could see, I was able to add those Fluval Biomax rings and the Eheim Substrat Pro into this filter without taking out anything else. And it didn't appear to impede the flow rate of this filter. It was still pumping out a ton of water when I got this thing running. So it's awesome that I was able to add so much more biological media because that is what we're looking for, folks. You want as much biological media as you can fit into these filters. Just remember, you don't want to clog it up. You still want water to run through. And I was a little worried because that glass protector for that UV bulb came a little broken. It was a little cracked on the inside. But as we could see, the light was still running, so the UV bulb was still on, and it's going to still be effective, which is great. But it does bring up a point. This is relatively thin plastic all around, but it's definitely enough to get the job done. Just don't roughhouse this too hard. Don't don't rip off these pretty thin plastic clips because those could break. And if that breaks, that this filter is broken. I really like the insert valve here that is basically a two-in-one for your intake and your output tube. All you have to do is flip that up, take this off, and that came off really easily, absolutely no spillage, which even the Fluval FX6 I have has a little spillage. It was really cool that they were able to make this such a clean disconnect, so maintenance on this will be really easy. All right, so the cons I have with this filter are the instruction manual is very brief. It's kind of broken English, and it really doesn't dive into detail on certain installation steps that can make you scratch your head a little bit and kind of unnecessary that they didn't keep that in there because it was pretty straightforward once you thought about it. But if they just written down or put in a picture, it would have been a lot easier to install this filter. Second, and what I think is probably the biggest flaw and it has nothing to do with the canister filter itself. I really like this. It's that pre-bent stiff tubing that they give you. For some reason, the output tube doesn't really go that far into the tank. So you need to keep your water level in your tank super high in order for it not to be making tons of noise and be spraying everywhere. Uh, second, with that same bent output tubing, it is bent so that if you put that spray bar in, you either have to go your entire length across the short width of your tank, or you have to align your entire tubing system to go along the side of your tank, which most people don't really want to install their tank that way because it's in their living room or in a viewing area 
where the sides of the tank are free game for people to view from. So I don't know why they made it so you can only put the tubing over the side of the tank. I was able to get around it by not using the spray bar. However, with those little clip stabilizers they give you to hook on the side of your trim, it barely fits a 75 gallon aquarium and that barely fitting makes it so you lose a quarter of an inch of depth on your output. So again, you're losing even more of that tiny amount of space they give you between the output and the top of your tank. So I'm gonna have to be filling up evaporated water a little more than I want to just to keep the noise down from the filter. So with all that said, all these cons can kind of be wiped away. And you know why? Because this was only $80. $80 for all of this equipment. It came with all that filter media you saw, with those ceramic rings, those bio balls, all those sponges. So really, this is an excellent deal. The Cascade 1200 I have only has about 300 gallons per hour. So about two thirds the flow rate of this filter holds less media and it was around $100. So if this works and continues to work and is actually creating that output that it claims, this is gonna have a lot more filtration power than that Cascade. So $80 for this thing is awesome. Yeah, obviously it doesn't come with some of the bells and whistles and the tubing and getting around your tank is not the best design, but I could get around that. And to get all this for $80 is awesome. I cannot promise performance because I haven't tried it for a long enough time yet. But again, I have faith in it. And so far, excellent little filter. And you might have seen a little teaser in the back. I've changed up quite a bit of my tank. I'm gonna add a fish to it next. It's gonna be a part two to can fish live with your pet turtle? And I'm not gonna tell you what fish they are. That's a surprise. So stay tuned for that video. This is my first time setting up the great budget filter, the Suns, I mean the Polar Aurora canister filter. So if you have any advice on how I actually should have set up maybe the media inside here, or people have better experience with different types of media, and let me know, because we are a community of turtle pet owners that are trying to make the best life for our turtles. So having great filtration and clean water is obviously a goal for everyone and it can be a challenge. So otherwise, feel free to hit that like button or subscribe. Thanks for watching. Long live your turtle here. See ya. All right, you guys, so I mentioned earlier, it was a big mistake to install this glass cover that co covers our UV bulb into this filter when it was broken on the bottom. Now, why is that? Well, I think it was two mental errors on my part. First was putting a broken piece of glass into this filter. And second, I'm not sure if I screwed it on tight enough because I was so worried about breaking this glass further. With those two issues, the following problem arose. So I was working and my fiance works from home. She's on call, so she needs the Wi-Fi at all times working 100%. I got a call that the Wi-Fi was out and all the power was out in the living room and the dining room. And I had to run home and come out and figure out what was going on. And this is what happened after a little bit of investigation. So the first thing was the power was out. And what happened was water ended up filling this protective glass cover and it got all the way up to our socket here where you plug in this UV bulb and it short circuited the filter and it tripped the breaker for my entire living room and dining room. Of course, the Wi-Fi was hooked up to that, which affected my fiance, and I feel really bad about that. But that brings me to the point. Why did this fill up? Again, there were two cracks on the bottom of the glass, which could have caused water to get in and fill up. But also, I think it might have been because I didn't screw this in tight enough, because I was so worried about breaking it, that I think water might have filled up in it, because when I took this filter apart, there was a little suction noise, as if air had got stuck in here with the water, and when that suction broke, it just smashed out the bottom of our protective glass cover here. So it was completely useless. Without this cover, it'll short circuit your filter immediately. So you have to have this glass cover installed correctly. Otherwise, even with this light turned off, you can't run the filter and it'll, it'll go right through your circuit breaker and trip it. So I reached out to the company. I told them what happened. I was just looking for some replacement parts. I haven't heard back from them, unfortunately, and I'm not sure if I will. And I'm too impatient, so I took things into my own hands. And what I did was I repaired our glass cover. It looks really sloppy, but it'll do the trick. So luckily when this broke, it only broke into two little glass pieces on the bottom that were that fit perfectly back in here. So what I did was I took some clear Gorilla Epoxy and I put those two glass pieces back where they belong 
um, with the edges of it covered in that epoxy, and then I just smother the rest of it with more epoxy. So you can see, it doesn't look that great, but I filled this thing with water, I blew on the end just to put some pressure into it, and nothing happened, it, and I think it's structurally good. Now I just need to make sure when I actually install this, I really get it tight in there and make a seal so no water can leak in here, fill up, short everything out. So I don't wanna blame that on the filter itself, I'm gonna blame that on my own mental error on making a couple silly mistakes, which was going forward with using this part instead of trying to return it, and then installing it probably incorrectly because I was concerned about it. But things happen, it happened, we fixed it, we're gonna move along, this filter's gonna be back in business, don't you worry. Now unfortunately, I'm pretty sure I shake this, it's rattling, pretty sure this bulb is out, I'm gonna have to buy a new one um, from the manufacturer, which won't be too bad, it's meant to be replaced, but I'm gonna plug it in anyway, just check that light on the top of your cover, and if it's on, it's working, if it's not, gotta get a new one. So you saw that you had to put a lot of pressure to turn into this thing. I only put a little bit before and turned it a little bit. At least for my unit, it took a lot of muscle to get this thing sealed. And you want it sealed. Water is traveling past there. If there's any gap, it's going to fill up short. Boom. My story happens. I'm going to move forward with making this tank behind me fish friendly. This was a long one. Thanks for sticking through it. See ya.